హలో లేడీస్ అండ్ జెంటల్మెన్ వెల్కమ్ టు ట్రిపుల్ ఎన్ మీడియా ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ నిక్ నికమ్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ వరల్డ్ న్యూస్ దిస్ ఈజ్ జనవరి నైన్ ట్వంటీ ద టాపిక్ ఆఫ్ ఫోకస్ టుడే ఈజ్ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ రీ ఇన్ఫెక్షన్ ఆఫ్టర్ వ్యాక్సినేషన్ ఇస్ ఇట్ పాసిబుల్ ఫర్ పీపుల్ హూ ఆల్రెడీ హెడ్ ఇన్ఫెక్షన్ ఆర్ దోస్ హూ ఆల్రెడీ హెడ్ వ్యాక్సినేషన్ to get a second episode of covid infection the answer is let's explore this topic further as the number of new cases and the deaths spiral out of control here in the united states and all across the globe there is a race for vaccination to be accelerated here in the united states and also in europe as we can see the death rate has gone up uh, more than 4000 deaths per day here in the united states uh, and the number of new cases we have reached 250000 new cases per day so there is more urgency in trying to get as many people as possible vaccinated to prevent the spread of this corona virus Before we go any further I would like you to take a look at the COVID-19 pandemic an international guide which I have written it is on amazon.com while you are there you can also check out all my other publications let's get back to the feature presentation can you get covid-19 reinfection after vaccination before we go into whether you can get reinfection or not we need to understand what happens when the corona virus enters the body the corona virus basically structurally is made up of a single strand rna that's the sequence of amino acids with a membrane covering the rna and then it has the spike proteins which are the most dangerous part of the corona virus when this corona virus enters the body it is a foreign object and the body begins to respond by producing antibodies there are various kinds of antibodies in the initial stages in the first few days the body produces the igm and in the long run like several weeks to several months it has igg which is the long term antibody in addition to that it also stimulates the t and b cells to memorize these antigens or the foreign objects so that if they are reintroduced the body will begin to reproduce these antibodies it is the same response we are trying to get with vaccination when we give vaccination here with the pfizer and the moderna vaccines basically we are giving a part of the spike protein antigen it is not a complete virus it's just part of the spike protein introduced into the body to produce these uh, immune responses namely the humoral or hormonal responses that is producing igm and igg antibodies and in the long term for the b cells and t cells to remember these antigens or the spike proteins so that if there is a new introduction of the virus into the body they will begin to produce antibodies The question is how long do these antibodies last when you get an infection or even when you get a vaccination how can people get reinfection when you already had infection or when you already had vaccination we are going to explore that okay let's look at what are the scenarios where a person can get reinfection with covid-19 the first point is based on both studies from Pfizer and Moderna these vaccines were only 95% effective that means at least 5% of the people may not produce adequate antibodies or not produce the right kind of antibodies as a result they are prone to infection with a corona virus and i have seen at least one instance where a doctor friend of mine got the vaccine on tuesday and on friday he got sick for some other reason he went to the emergency room he got covid tested and he was positive how is it possible <laughs> that's a good question first of all let's remember that the covid vaccine just like the virus takes time to act in the body 
to stimulate the antibody production. Let's go back to the previous slide here. As I said, the COVID vaccine acts just like the virus, but it is not the full virus, to produce these antibodies and it takes the same sequence of time to produce these short-term and long-term antibodies. So if you get an infection, overwhelming exposure to the virus uh, before the body had the chance to produce these antibodies, you are going to get infection. And also coronavirus mutations. We have already done a presentation on UK and South African coronavirus uh, mutations. You can look that up on our YouTube uh, channel. The coronavirus mutations alter the virus. So it is like a new virus. So the vaccines that we have may or may not work against these new mutations. This is pretty common. We have seen in flu vaccine. Flu vaccine is only 50 to 60 percent effective because there are so many flu viruses. You, you cannot practically cover all the strains of uh, flu vac viruses. As a result, the vaccine, its 50 to 60 percent effectiveness is the best we can achieve. And same thing with the coronavirus. We just started off with one form of coronavirus. Now we already have three or maybe more mutations of coronavirus. The UK version, the South African version, version, and just recently they came out with a United States variation of the coronavirus, but it has not been established yet. But as we see these mutations, the question really comes to the forefront as whether these uh, viruses are effectively controlled by the vaccination or not. And that's the situation where we might. Only time will tell us if that's going to be happening. The next point is just as in patients with the coronavirus infection, the antibodies cannot last forever. It's not like, say, like polio vaccine which can produce lifetime warranty. But with the COVID vaccine, they have found out the maximum length of time the body is able to produce antibodies is uh, approximately eight months. Uh, and the Pfizer Oxford Research Group felt that they may be able to have long term protection like two years. But that's something that only time will tell us. Again, we have to understand the nature of the COVID vaccine and the duration of the antibody protection that we expect from these uh, vaccines. Eight months and maybe after that, the antibody response is gone. We don't know whether we need a booster shot or whether we need to have a new vaccine that covers all the different mutations. Can someone get COVID infection from the vaccine itself? The vaccine we have today, which are the messenger RNA vaccines, they only have a part of the virus. Let me go back here and explain what I mean. Sometimes they use the entire virus, make it sort of less potent, and then introduce in the body to produce antibodies. Whereas with the messenger RNA technique, they have just used part of the sequence of this uh, spike protein and created a vaccine with that uh, technology. So the messenger RNA technology does not involve the entire virus. As a result, it is highly unlikely that it can create a coronavirus infection itself. And as I said, the vaccine effects may last for eight months at the max and there are some reports which say two years but that's something it's not proven yet and we talked about the mutation the next question is you had a coronavirus infection why do you need a vaccination most experts feel even if you had a coronavirus infection you would still benefit from the covid vaccine how so First of all, the body's response to coronavirus infection may not be robust enough and the vaccine has a more consistent antibody response and hence you can get a better antibody protection. Second, if you had coronavirus infection six or eight months ago, the chances are your antibody levels have come down to a point where you may be vulnerable for a reinfection. So given these reasons, uh, experts believe that it is reasonable to have COVID-19 vaccine even if you had coronavirus infection. 
The next question is, how long do you wait if you had an infection? The CDC recommends you wait for at least 10 days after you had an infection and make sure you don't have any fever before you get the vaccination. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is in a brief an overview of uh, the chances of getting reinfection with uh, COVID vaccination or having a previous episode of uh, COVID-19 infection and how do you approach that. Before I conclude, again, I would like you to take a look at the COVID-19 pandemic international guide on Amazon.com. Until next time, I am Nick Nickham. You have been watching the COVID-19 World News. This is January 9, 2021. And please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will see you next time.